When I spoke at the Oxford Roundtable, I think it was St. Anthony's College, it's a conglomeration of schools in, at Oxford. It's not just one school, it's a whole bunch of them that do various things, they're all called Oxford. That school was built, the wall around the school and the building that I spoke in was built in the 12th century. It was a nice building, had a nice wall around it, nice wooden gates and everything, old is, is outdoors. But imagine building a building like that that stood for years. And Cambridge, and then one of the things about London in general is that most of the buildings there were built in the 11th and 12th century. Some built, uh, we went into the... Uh, name of that church where Queen Mary of Scots is buried, Church of England. What's the name of that church? Who? Westminster Abbey. Went to Westminster Abbey. And uh, it was built uh, in the 13th century. Uh, all those old buildings. Now, I'm referencing the 11th century to 12th century because during that period of time, there were several phenomena going on. Most people were of the mindset that the earth was flat and that if you sail too far, you'd fall off of it. But the other thing is, is that there had never been a white man that had set foot on the continent of Africa in the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th, and 15th century. No white man had ever set foot on the, in the continent of Africa. It had always been all black all the time. The Great Wall of China built similar times. The Taj Mahal in, uh, in, in India the beautiful buildings in, in, in Russia. Peter the Great, who was a very unusual and unlikely and unseemly leader of Russia, who turned out to be one of the best leaders of Russia, Peter the Great, tall fellow, interesting, dynamic, inquisitive mind, camouflaged himself and went to England to study shipbuilding. He wanted to build ships. Um, and, and Moscow uh, had been the, the leading city on the east on the west coast of Russia, the biggest nation on the planet, and Kiev and a few other cities were around, and everybody just gathered around Moscow. But Peter the Great wanted to build another city because he believed that Russia should be a seagoing nation. He wanted to build ships. So he took a bunch of people down to the edge of the Black Sea and built St. Petersburg. I don't know if you know about St. Petersburg. It is a beautiful city. It is an extraordinary city. I mean, there's just... When, when Lenin took control of, control of Russia after, after Peter the Great's death many generations thereafter, Lenin, who wanted to rule all of Russia, changed the name of St. Petersburg to, Lenin, to Leningrad. I don't know if you know that. You may not be interested. A little history here tonight. Uh, but after the death of Lenin, and I forget under whose leadership it was, that the Russian people said, this is, we changed the name of, of Leningrad back to St. Petersburg because it is St. Petersburg, and, and Lenin's ego got in his way. So it's now called St. Petersburg. But if you ever get a chance to go to Russia, don't go to Moscow. Well, go to Moscow, too, because it's beautiful. But St. Petersburg, this man built one of the most beautiful working cities on the coast of the... where there was nothing there, and it's, it is a showplace to the world. St. Petersburg. Peter the Great. Great builder, shipbuilder, great leader, scientist. He was, he was Russia's Benjamin Franklin. No white man ever set foot on the continent of Africa. You can't go to Africa and find anything that was built in the 11th century, 12th century, 13th century, 14th century. They're still standing today because nothing was ever built. You said, well, they had cities, they had the great Songhe kingdom, they were the Mandingo, Zulu. Yeah, they did. They had large groups, they, they had tribes, but they lived in tents and they campfired. They didn't build anything. And the nations that they built all dissolve today. There's nothing there. You can go to Liberia. James Monroe gave the, the, the uh, Talbot family millions and ships and sent them back. You go to Liberia, go to Monrovia now, they're running around there, young boys with machine guns and cutting off one another's hands, the place, they don't pick up the garbage, dead dogs stay in the street for days, the place is a mess. It's Africa. They don't know how to do nothing. 
Well, the white man has kept us from building. No, white man never, listen, white man was, was, when they were building Cambridge and Oxford and England and Taj Mahal and building St. Petersburg, no white man ever been to Russia, been, to, been to, to, to Africa. It was just in 1492 that Columbus had to convince the world that if you sail so far, you're not going to fall off. Remember, the world, everybody was pretty much thinking that this is the end of it. There's nothing, there's not one city you can go from, from North Sahara all the way down to Cape Town and there's not one city, there's not one building, there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing. And we've got to feel, come to terms with that. Some woman pointed out to me there's a rock somewhere in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe was once called Rhodesia. It was Zimbabwe and it was named by Cecil Rhodes who was a very wealthy Englishman who was one of the first that journeyed down into South Africa, even when there was fighting between the Zulus and the uh, Afrikaners. Cecil Rhodes journeyed down into South Africa. He had plenty of money, he had made money uh, in enterprise and business. He was just a very wealthy man. And uh, became even wealthier in South Africa. And Rhodesia, I mean, Zimbabwe is encircled by South Africa as a nation. It's just a small nation within the nation. And Cecil Rhodes decided he wanted to take that nation for himself. He wanted to take it. There was a king there, pretty powerful. He would fended off all the other warriors there in, uh, in that region for years. But Cecil Rhodes had money, so he, he bribed the king into thinking to sign in some sort of contract with him that uh, they would share in the partnership of, uh, of um, and the, the king knew about all the success that Cecil Rhodes had. Uh, and Cecil Rhodes was like 30, 40 years old at the time. So the king foolishly signed the, the, uh, the contract, and when Cecil Rhodes came and demanded that the contract be honored, which meant he, in fact, in fact was now the owner of Zimbabwe at the time, the king rose up in arms and he killed them. And Caesar rose with his army with machine guns and just killed them all. But the thing of it is, that's very interesting, is that the children in Zimbabwe were playing with stones. They were barefoot, the red dust there. They were just playing with stones. And one of the Cecil Rose lieutenants said, boy, bring me that, bring me that stone, a stone about that big. Bring me that. And the kids have been playing with it for days. They put it beside the tree, and then they come back and play with it again. They throw it around and whatnot. Well, South Africa, and in that region, has one of the largest, most productive diamond pikes in the world. Pikes that just shoot diamonds up out of the air, out of the ground, from, I don't know, 150,000 feet down ever so often. And the children were playing with diamonds. I mean, large diamonds. But the king and African people had no idea of their value or even what they were. And this was back in the 19th century. It wasn't way back in the voodoo days. We have to come to terms with it. No matter how painful it is, you can go from California to South Africa to Kenya to Tanzania to... And by the way, he changed the name of the country to Rhodesia. They've changed it back now to Zimbabwe. And you can't find one city that black people have built. You can find plenty of ghettos, but you can't find one city. Now, that's not pleasant. And many people will argue with me. Like, oh, yeah, we did build a city, but, the, but, 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 but it burned down. Well, London is still standing. Hitler bomb, Hitler's Luftwaffe bombed Germany like they won't know in. There's a city in Germany called Coventry where Hitler had broken the code. Of, uh, I mean, uh, Churchill had broken the code of uh, German of, uh, of of Hitler's military plans, and he and Churchill knew that the Luftwaffe, the German air force, was coming tonight to burn to bomb Coventry. And because he didn't want Hitler to know he had broken the code, he allowed that city to be bombed, and they bombed it back to the Stone Age. But it was a, it was a good a decision on behalf of Churchill, because. Because they broke the code, they were able to then break the German army. But saying that the white man stopped, there ain't never been no city in Africa. There ain't never, there ain't nobody never built one. And we understand, well, why? Even here in, in New York City, even in America, 
There ain't no city y'all have ever built. You ain't never built no city. You ain't never built no city. And God gave you Harlem, and I tried to tell you how to hold on to that, and you ain't got no sense about that. And you need to come to terms with this. Stop this foolishness. Stop it. Stop it. You ain't never built nothing. You ain't never built nothing. That whole continent... There's not one memorial, there's not one thing standing in the entire continent. But everywhere you go to China, you go to Mexico even, you go to Brazil, and everybody has done something. There's a problem here, and we've got to stop fooling ourselves and ask God to help us. Help us. Help us. We need help. The only thing we've ever done we did it because the white man gave us a platform upon which to do it. He helped us. He built schools for us and let us go. He built highways so we could travel. We got to admit it. Got to stop these black folk running around here talking about the white man did this, white man did this. You got to get that mess out of you. You ain't never going to be a productive for God. You ain't never going to be able to understand anything until you get that fool realize that we are in trouble. You'll never call on God for help if you don't realize how difficult the situation is. All these years, all these years, and even here in Harlem, look at here. You don't have to go to Africa, forget about 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Look here in Harlem. Look here. First time black person got to get two quarters, they moved so far away from Harlem that you can't, you can't fire a missile to the moon and get it. I thought I'd share those things with y'all tonight. The moment we realize, wait a minute, Pastor Man don't hate black people. He's telling us the truth. He's telling us the truth. He's telling us what's wrong with us. What's wrong with us? And one of the most beautiful cities in Africa is Cape Town and Johannesburg, but white folk built that. <laughs> and black folk are tearing it up because they don't know how to do nothing. But God has sent me here. God has sent me here to speak this truth. And if you're not following me, if you think that somehow or another that I'm just here to try to make black folks look bad, it means you don't want to know the truth because you can't show me. You can't even, you can't, forget about going to Africa. You can't show me nothing here. In every place we are, there's more than 300 of us. It's a ghetto everywhere. All right, my friends, I thank you all for letting me spend this time. I feel so empowered that God has given me a fresh anointing to continue this work. I'm excited. This work that lies ahead of us, I want you to understand the truth that we speak. Make a commitment. Stop that jigabooing that you're doing. All that stuff, that bad personality you've got, all that's Get delivered. Get delivered.